episode 29. Back at you live. 29. Watch is back. Back in town. I didn't miss him. Yes, after back. all. Yes, he's back. Yes, he's I didn't miss back. him after all. Back. But thank you for tuning into the video recap of Keeping Up the Geek Bros, episode 29. Five is in Britain. And you African are all roots. about this. Zamunda Nation. Through Stay religion. tuned for all the shenanigans. It's Geek Bros time. Auditory pleasure. Here's your hosts, Wancho and Vibe. Keeping up with the Geek Bros. We are back on Friday again to record the podcast. That means Juancho is back with his beautiful singing voice. What's going on? What's going on, guys? What's going on? This is Juancho. Hey, hey now. This is the Wakanda Nation vibe. I think vibe is feeling himself. I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling really good. I think he's feeling his African roots come back to him. We just finished <laughs> watching African roots. Um, the Black Panther, which we're going to discuss at the end of the podcast. Spoilers alert. There's going to be so many spoilers all up in your face. Like a spoiler alert in your face type of thing. <laughs> what? I was trying to go somewhere, but yeah, you lost family it. Yeah. podcast. Family podcast. Guys, I'm back. Um, thank you for welcome all. back, Juancho. Again, our condolences <laughs> goes out to, to you and <laughs> to you and thank yours. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to know. I want to say this out clear. In the last episode, Vibe kept saying Xfinity War. I want to clarify that that's not what Juancho wrote on the script. He wrote Infinity War, but. If I wanted to be a Juancho, okay, I'm and gonna, couldn't I'm pronounce gonna, it. Hold on, now. So I'm, I'm, I'm going Xfinity. to I'm going to clarify that even further. Not only did it not did Juancho not type uh, Xfinity War, he didn't type that at all. I decided to edit it and I added Infinity War and um, the Han Solo trailer review into his script, and I typed it in as Xfinity and I read it as I typed it. So it has nothing to do with Juancho. That was all me. Yeah, he has issues. I have issues. Five. Let's tell them. Where can they find us? Guys, thanks for tuning in to Keep It Up the Geek Bros, episode 28. 29. 29. That's 29, okay. not 28. I'm always at 28. I said 28? Yes. 29. 29. I'm at 29. Next week is 30 okay. episodes. 30 episodes. My God, I didn't even want to do one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you can check us out always, first, every week, whenever Watch was doing it, um, at WeBeGeeksPC.com, the first place. To, to listen, listen to. to podcast. Hey, I posted it last week on Saturday, on Friday night. You did. Well, usually we usually say Friday night, so, you know, over the weekend. So. It's a Juan, you listen, we do our best, <laughs> but we do it for you, okay? Exactly. Don't forget our social media, Juancho. That's Geek Bros. That's the Instagram, the Twitter, and the email at Geek Bros, G E K B R 0 S. That's Geek Bros with a zero. And, and then, of course, for the email, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Geek Bros with a zero at yahoo.com exactly. and same thing for, for the extension for our brand page on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and Twitter. introducing uh, Stardust we now have the Stardust uh, movie uh, reaction app um, that's the the name for that though is not Geek Bros because it's for the entire studios for all the shows that's um, Vibe Rev Studios the same thing it's V-I-B-E R-E-V S-T-U-D-I-O-S same thing for our, our website just put a dot com at the end of that so Juancho yes sir how was your weekend? My weekend. What did I do last weekend? Did I do anything last weekend? I don't think so. Well, I, don't think I did a little bit much. of editing. You know, I did. Oh, I, yeah. I did a little, I, I did a little I, bit of editing. I remember you know? what I did last weekend. What did you do? Oh yes, I yeah. know what you did last yeah, weekend. So we yes, yeah. yes. Anyways, it was an eventful weekend, but we're moving forward one day at a time. We're looking forward for this weekend. I guess to go see the Black Panther again. Okay. So yeah, that's good. Um, my weekend was simple. It was editing. It was uh, laying in bed. It was editing. It was laying in bed. I did a little R and R. Yeah. You know, 
Do your thing, bro. Hey, listen, this is what I gotta do. What's going on with the Geek Bros lately? Well, the Geek Bros, let me see. As of last time, we released. What did we release? <laughs> I should have brought this up. Um, huh? No, it was not. Yeah. We, released up, we released the. I'm blanking here. Yeah, you didn't release anything. Yes, we did. The Han Solo. Oh, yeah, the Han Solo reaction. Yes, 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 yes Geek yes, Bros Han did. Solo reaction that was released still, last week. Which is still being under review, YouTube. Under review. It's okay, it happens. So, we also have the video recap from last year. Last year, last week, sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm high on, on Wakanda. So, uh, coming up coming up soon, um, right after this podcast, Wancho and I will be reviewing. It'll be. We've decided to now combine our spoiler review and our normal review into one video so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to do a non-spoiler review we're going to give you a spoiler warning we're going to say skip to this time code if you don't want to listen and we're going to have one long video instead of doing two videos because it's for whatever reason i can get out the non-spoiler review video out really quickly but a spoiler review takes me forever to, to get out which is why the last jedi spoiler review is still impending and why the last jedi um uh smoothie talk is yeah. still pending so i decided you know what one time thing we're going to do the non-spoiler review with the good the bad the ugly uh the characters the plot and then give you guys a spoiler review, and then do the spoiler, and then one video. Yep. No must, no fuss. 15, 20 minutes as opposed to two, two, 10, 10, 20 minute videos. Um, it's more, um, uh, what's it called? Efficient for me Super as the efficient. editor. So, with that being said, Juancho, what brings us here today? Well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Very interesting topics. Uh, for the comic book news, we're going to talk about the LAPD investigated an incident at Stanley's house yesterday. Movies of the weekend, video games out this week, and video game news. No anime invasion this week. For open mic discussion, we got the Cloverfield review. We have Disney and EA rumors because loot boxes and because you guys love <laughs> continuity. <laughs> because you love love continuity looking because loot boxes. Yes. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Fighter. Is Disney's biggest down? Is Disney's biggest downfall their greatest moment? No, the greatest weakness. Sorry. Yeah, that was dead air. You, you can't have yeah. dead air on podcast. Sensitivity hits again. Video game and violence. Wait, wait. Sensitive sensitivity strikes back. Ooh. And Blank Panther. Blank Panther. <laughs> <laughs> Black Panther. Spoiler and end credit scenes breakdown. He said Blank Panther. I'm sorry. That's the best thing I ever heard. All right, guys. Let's get it down, Wantro. It's time for the Fresh Scent. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. Fresh Scent. Fresh Scent. Fresh Scent. So, yesterday, there was news that the LAPD, that's Los Angeles Police Department, were reportedly investigating battery charges at the Stanley's house. This article is coming from comicbook.com, which states, No suspect victims or further details have been officially named, but the Daily Mail has honed in on a longtime manager and bodyguard, Max Anderson, as likely target of an investigation. Adult Protective Services, an organization which investigates charges of elder abuse, were in attendance as well. The Los Angeles Police Department had no confirmation as whether Stan Lee was the alleged victim. Nevertheless, that could quickly become the dominant narrative unless another story emerges. The Daily Story focused heavily on Anderson's criminal past marked by charges of physical violence abuse, violence against those closest to him. That, that same month, I guess something happened recently where it says here, at the same month, Lee discovered that someone had written a $300,000 check out of his account after an investigation turned out Someone had purchased a $850,000 home at Lee's dime without his knowledge. There has been no official statement yet from Lee Anderson or Lyas on the investigation and there is no indication, indication that an arrest has been made. The LAPD confirms that only that an investigation was happening on Lee's block. So, did you want to, I don't know, tell the audience where you got this? I actually did that at the beginning. You did not. You I said. I told them it com it's coming from comicbook.com. I'm I'm not paying attention. I apologize. I, really, I was I, I was really I was that. on the phone. I saw. I was doing social media outreach. Uh, yeah, I saw. <laughs> I don't appreciate it. He doesn't appreciate it. So. This is how I show I missed you. I go yeah, on my I phone see, when I you're see here. I see that. <laughs> so, that's a quick, not a little gossip news there for the comic book. I have been slacking the comic book news. I'm like, hey, let me find some good news. And I, hey, this is pretty interesting. Some. Well, that's, the, that, that's, that's a little different. So what they're basically saying is, is are they assuming that he's being um, 
elderly abuser being taken advantage of or embezzlement? I guess by the bodyguard Max Anderson. Wow. That's kind of that's kind of like if Happy turned turned on Tony. I don't see Tony turning uh, Happy turning to Tony. Turning on Tony? Maybe maybe oh. a night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Family too soon. podcast. <laughs> So yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. So um, moving there, that was pretty lame. Continuity. Continuity. Um, movie weekend of the weekend. Black <laughs> Panther. Black Panther. Oh my gosh. Woo! And you know, cause this coming from me, this coming from me. We're not even at the part where we want to review this yet. But coming from me, you guys know how I've kind of been flaking on these movies lately. Woo! That's all I have to say. Woo! And switch. It's not part of the song. <laughs> Guys, I uh, recommend you seeing this movie. We're going to break down the trailer. Uh, the, 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 the movie. The movie. We're going to give you guys a spoiler If you guys want to just like only hear the review and not hear all of us start, just go ahead towards maybe the end of the episode where you're going to catch us saying Black Panther is amazing. Don't you ever listen to him, okay? You listen to this entire podcast, okay? <laughs> all right, guys. Um, video games out this week. A uh, couple interesting video games out this week. Our Boy for the PlayStation uh, network on the eShop and on the Xbox One. That's all out on February 13th. Overcooked Special Edition for the Switch on the 13th. Crossing Souls on the 13th. Then it's to Warriors 9 for, on the 13th, which we were re- looking forward to. Vibes for a type of games. The Longest Love Five em. Minutes uh, February 13th. The Fall Part 2 Unbound. Wonder Boy, The Dragon Strap uh, for the Switch. <laughs> what? Wonder Boys, Dragon Strap. This is a family podcast, one show. Like How dare you? I know, right? Okay, none of those kind of kind of games on this show. Okay, no rated M for mature. <laughs> um, Monster sense. Energy Supercross, the official video game, February thirteenth. Kingdom Come Deliverance, February thirteenth. Drunken Bar Fight. Ah, <laughs> Drunken Bar Fight. That's funny. Knockout League, Mangon Carnival, Pinstripe, Sprint Vector, Spock. True fear. <laughs> what are, you, are you okay? Spock. You sound like you're having a stroke. Spock. Like Sprint Fester. Spock. <laughs> <laughs> Reading Historian Perfect Chronology. Slice Dice and Rice. Torque L Physics Mortify. Senior Drifter. Johnny's Turbo Arcade. Gate of Doom. Wonder Josh. Try Again or Walk Away. Samurai Aces for Nintendo Switch. Aqua Kitty UDX for the Switch. Secret Mana. I'm very disappointed that Secret Mana, an original Nintendo, Super Nintendo video game, did not make it into the Switch. It only made it for the PC and PS4. Melee, Pool Billiards, Machine Knight, Bayonetta 2, Bayonetta, Fee, Joe Devers, Lone Wolf. So those are the video games out this week. Um, honorable mentions here the Bayonetta series coming out the Bayonetta series coming out for the Switch uh, today um, they're getting ready for Bayonetta 3 they were able to acquire that for the Switch I'm really interested to see how it ports over to the Switch so it's, not, it's a powerful console but you're going to compare it to a, the power of a PS4 and Xbox One it's well of course there. of course, the quality is going to degrade a little but, bit but uh, listen a little uh, bit true crime not the game there was a game Doom it ported beautifully. No, it's not Doom. It's Doom was called Skyrim. Ported beautifully, and I have no complaints over it. Okay, so that's good. So, let's continue moving forward. So, guys, do you ever wonder if the hat on Toad's head was real, or was it just a hat? You, you mean this, his head? The mushroom head of a mushroom? Yes. Okay. Do you think that it's a head? Like the top part of his no, head, that, or was that's, it a hat? That's his head. He's a mushroom. But do you think that's a hat? No, it's his head. He is well, a mushroom. Well, in the Super Nintendo, uh, Super, in the Mario cartoons, there was a scene where Toad removes that part, and it's a hat. That's not canon. It is canon. That's not canon. So, Nintendo finally confirmed the truth about Toad's head. This article is coming from Eurogamer.net. Eurogamer.net, the only no, not really. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Nintendo has finally confirmed that Toad's head is indeed his head. Of course. And not as some hats reckless speculate recklessly speculated a hat settling an issue that's been hotly debated for this decades. This has been hotly debated with whom? The shocking revelation, shocking for those poor misguided souls of Team Hat at least, comes courtesy of Super Mario Odyssey producer. Yoshaki Koizumi, who took the time to answer a few Mario-related fan questions in a new and need 
I remind you, officially sanctioned video from Nintendo. Canon. I'm going to leave, have to leave it all up to you. Wait, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to have to leave it to you all to figure out exactly how that works out, said Kazumi after his Megaton head reveal. Maybe there's something inside. Well, like a br oh my god, <laughs> that's oh my wrong. god, I'm looking, I'm looking, <laughs> it says lies, it says lies, okay, so we scroll lies. down, we scroll down, <laughs> we scroll down the article, and there's that infamous clip where Toad like takes his hat off, that doesn't even look, it, it, that looks like, it looks like a penis head, it looks like a sperm head, that's the head of a sperm, <laughs> look at the, look, look at the okay, with the little whiskers, yeah, the little Kajila, that's awful, he looks terrible, well, Toad is, has an official, he's a mushroom, so, wow, Toad is not a, um, is that whatever that's so, supposed to so, be, are the mushrooms that he eats baby toads? Uh, no, it's it's, it's toads excrements. His 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 feces. Oh, his yeah. feces makes him grow. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's canon. Everybody canon. Yeah. Okay. Vibe says it's canon. So when it's a power up, that means it's something else. What is oh, a power up? Zing zing. zing, zing. <laughs> the feces make him grow, and and something else makes so, him so power up. I really don't understand why this was debated for such a long time. I've never heard of this debate before. Yeah, have I? Um, I guess I, it's for the fanboys. I guess. But I, I guess, but. I always thought that was his head. He was, he's, he's a team I always thought he was a head. I didn't think that was a hat. I never knew there was a team head or a team. This seems really awful saying <laughs> team, team hat? head or team hat. So Are you team head or team hat? I'm all about team, uh, team, team hat. Team yeah, hat, yeah. Team hat. I'm all about team Family hat. podcast. Family podcast. So um, that sounds interesting. And hopefully you guys out there listening. Toad is a mushroom. So definitely guys, give us a... He does uh, not have a hat. Give us uh, an email. Uh, Geek Bros. That's oh, look, look, talk about G E E K B R zero S at yahoo.com. This, this is, is this here. The despicable, white, dis dismantled piece of anti head propaganda comes from the 1980 Super Mario Brothers cartoons, which, as a Eurogamer news editor, Tom Phillips is furiously reminding in capital letters while I type, is non canon. Non canon. So send us an email. Tell us what you think. If you're one of those team head or team hat, and visuals. I'd love to hear from you because I didn't know this was a thing. So shoot us an, an, an email for that or any other reason. I'm going to keep asking you guys every podcast all the time until you guys start consistently talking to us. Just shoot us an email. So, my, you know what time it is? No. Open mic discussion. Open mic. Open mic. What if it happened to your soundboard? Man? I left my computer. Actually, I got a brand new backpack for that computer. I wanted to show you. I can't wait for, to sh for you to see it. It has oh. a portable USB charger thing on the side of the of the backpack so you oh. can charge your phones all fancy oh Ooh, so fancy. fancy so last week or the week before cloverfield was released to the world on netflix and it completely Clover, blew the, my Clo mind. the cloverfield paradox yes yes it completely blew my mind there's been it was weird. Well, at what, first. well, what blew your mind? The movie or, the, or how they dropped it after? After, if anybody knows that the Super Bowl was on and, and the commercial came, the trailer came on the Super Bowl and it said now playing right after the Super Bowl. So, is that what blew your mind or the movie blew your mind? The movie blew my mind. Okay, let's break it down. Are we doing? Are we doing a review? Yeah. What does that say out there? It, Clover Field review. Well, the Clover Field is a great movie, but this is a Clover Field paradox. Clover See, I'm Field being, I'm paradox. I'm technical in this mug. So, back what I was saying, Vibe. Sorry. If you know if you played the movie at the same time, the sequence where the Earth shakes and the sequence where they're up in space are happening simultaneously at the same time. You mean from the, from the two movies? You mean, yeah. You mean from the original Cloverfield and Paradox? Yeah. Yeah. The movie was yeah, really weird. It. Well, let's, let's, had a nice let's, let's not get into that yet. First, did you enjoy the movie? Yes, I did. I actually enjoyed okay. it a lot. So did I. I. I mean, have you seen some of the reviews? Yeah, they've been horrible. They've been horrible. I don't know why there's so much hate on it. Um, the movie was was I, I thought it was enjoyable. I was I was in invested for the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. You I actually said I'm saying that I'm I enjoyed the movie. I was hoping for the the, like, the plot not to happen the way it did. Well, you see, the thing is, though, is that I, I didn't was, know. I was, like, praying for it. Like, no, and I'm like, no, when it happened. Well, the thing is, though, is I didn't see the trailer. I didn't even know about it. I just heard I didn't it. see I, the trailer either. Right, I, just so, said, I went straight so, to so it. So I didn't know what it was being marketed as. I think maybe that's what that's what the difference is, because from my understanding, it was being marketed as an origin story, and it kind of wasn't that for, or at least no. not enough for people. I didn't see the trailer. I didn't know they were marketing it and marketing as that. So I watched it Actually, as, as another. I think, I think, if I remember correctly, it says, this is where the beginning happened. But it really 
it doesn't feel like an origin story to me. It, no, be, well, of course, because just like Ten Cloverfield Lane, this, these were these are stories that weren't part of the Cloverfield Cloververse, and it was tweaked to fit in it. Mm -hmm. So I just thought it was just going to be another anthology movie. I didn't expect it. So I think maybe if I did see the trailer and it said this is where it begins, and then this was the movie, I'd be disappointed. But I yeah. didn't see the trailer. I saw it as okay, this is probably going to be another I, standalone with very with very slight modif slight tweaks to what's going on. I don't remember much of the trailer. All I know the movie was really amazing. Well, it's, it's I think it had its splices. It's, it's spliced in some of the um, clips from the other movies, I believe, because I saw it. I know it did show the first Cloverfield, and um, it, it it did. It marketed it as. It that. reminded me. Have you ever played the video game Dead Space? No. It reminded me of Dead Space. It reminded me of Event Horizon. It reminded me of Event Horizon, but but um, less less scary and thrillerish, and more of a mystery. That's what I. That's that's what it reminded me of. Okay. But okay, so let's get into it. Um, what you what do you like about the movie? Um, you mean besides the leading act actress who was beautiful? Uh, yes, uh, she was beautiful. I actually had to look her up. I was like, who is she? Because she has a very um, odd name, um, so I couldn't like I had to look her up and type it in there. I, I, even as of right now, it escapes me. Beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed my the favorite part about it is is um was well my favorite parts plural was like the final destination feel it had to it like everybody yeah. died in such odd not everybody excuse me and yes this is going to be a spoiler review by the way um but a, a good chunk of the cast dies and they all die in very different ways a very final destination like so put final destination put event horizon together you i got it i like the whole th thing about that particular spaceship taking over t space of another spaceship that's happening in a different universe. Right. It it it, it was. And then a, it caused the other one to crash, and then everybody believes that it's. Well, I don't know. Did, did they say? Did they say that it caused the other one to crash, or that it just crashed? Because remember when when the other one took to space. That's no, it didn't. Why? No, it didn't. Hold on. When they reappeared, they appeared on the other side of the of the, of of the sun. The, yeah, but hold on. This happened after. Because what originally happened when they transfer over, it wasn't because they couldn't see the Earth, or they because they were rotated. How did that girl end up in that inside that thing? Is because they poured it into there, so they, they ended up taking that particular space. I don't know. I don't think so. Because, 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 watch it because no, I watched it and I understand that 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 it melded a bunch of people together and it melded like the two the two Russian guys together and melded her into it. But what I'm trying to say is that when they went into the other universe, they were up, they were inverted, and on the other side of the sun. Exactly, but but still, that's not where their clothes. The cover was still outside of. But Earth. that. Oh, when there was a thing in the scene that says that you guys caused my spaceship to crash, did she, she say said that? that. Did she say that? Yes, she did. Because that's what she, that's what her revenge was. No, her revenge was because they revenge. removed, they killed her crew. No, her revenge was the simple fact that they wanted to leave and and not save her planet. Right. And then they, they killed they killed her. No, because at their planet they were fine. No. Yes, their planet wasn't going on. On there was no aliens at that particular planet. In that planet where they were, there was no aliens. Well, there's no, there was no aliens anywhere. On yeah. on on the area, okay. You when, need to watch the movie again. No, you need to watch the movie again because when they poured it into 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 let's call it Universe B, okay, that Earth was already at war. But and the other Earth, but, it, but forget the Cloverfield her... monsters, the Earth that that Earth A, where the original cast that we were following came from, they weren't at war yet. But in in World B, in Universe B, they took up the space of that particular crash, which caused. The, the uh, whole project to crash. How, Juan Cho, they appeared in, in inverted on the other side of the, of the sun where the Cloverfield okay. station was. But that's what she said. I you guys to killed to my crew. I don't remember her, okay. I don't remember her ever saying that. We're going to gonna continue this. We're going to get you guys back to this next week. No, no, we're going to continue talking. No, 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 we're going to continue talking. No, we're going to continue talking. But we're going to get back to We're going to rewatch the movie. We're going to rewatch the movie. Okay, we're going to rewatch the movie. For continuity. Exactly. <laughs> next week's homework for Vibe is to rewatch the movie and listen to it carefully because she, she doesn't never, care. She never, she, she, she never, she never. All right, even better. Audience, our dear audience, email us at geekbros, that's with a zero, at yahoo.com and just let us know. Did you hear what's her name? I don't even know what the name is. I don't, I don't know the know. characters. The 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 one who's in the in the in the panels. Did she really uh, blame uh, the Cloverfield Station Universe A members for killing her crew? I don't remember it. It didn't make any sense to me. But by all means, let me know. If I'm wrong, I will apologize to Juancho on my knees. Ooh. <laughs> so, said, Ooh. On the next podcast. So did you think that the movie? Was good or not? No, the movie was was great. I, I enjoyed it. I would recommend okay. it, but I wouldn't recommend it.
for the way that they the, for, for for those who are expecting answers. Is this gonna give you and this this movie gonna lead us to another Cloverfield Netflix movie? Well, they did. No, I don't think so. I think I think that the rumors are true that they probably saw this movie and said this is crap. We're not putting this uh, as a theatrical release, so let's drop it on Netflix. I think that that was a ploy because it probably was not a good movie for the movie theaters for, Disney, for some you people. You should listen to them. Okay, uh, but solo. but okay. So what do you think about the little sprinklings that w- that that were the connective tissue? To the Cloverfield actually, universe. Actually, it was really good. I actually felt that it felt very natural. It didn't feel forced. Um, the ending didn't feel forced with the way that you see the monster jumping on the, on the clouds. I didn't feel forced. It did to me. I did because I I didn't need that. And, and, I, it, and I, it, I I see your case. I see your case of why you will need it. Right. But go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't need it. Um, it was unnecessary. You could have just let her go through the clouds, and you could have had him say, "Don't come back to these things." We already assumed when we saw it in the shadows. That what was going on? You don't have to show it to us. I think that I don't know if it was JJ's fault or whoever it was, but they thought that the audience who was watching this weren't smart enough. You see what I'm trying to say? I think when you did that, I'm like, really, man, I'm not an idiot. You know what I'm trying to say? Is you, you sprinkled it in? You we saw the shadow going by. He's screaming into his phone. We all pretty much assumed what was going on. I thought you were never gonna show it to us. For it to pop out, just say, oh, by the way. Cloverfield, Clover, I, I, it was unnecessary. I enjoyed it. I it, there was some good, some weird tie-ins like to the movie. I, what do you? I mean, I, you no, know, it was well, yeah. But, you know, I had some slush. You had a slush thing there. Mm-hmm. You had Tagarato was was brought up. The the Cloverfield paradox was yeah. not the name of the station. It was more. It was the name of the of the particular um, concept of yeah. d- of breaking open dimensions. Um, you had you had uh, uh, another Stambler, which is I believe the brother of, of the character from from Ten Cloverfield Lane. I liked how they. How they matched what happened in Cloverfield um, State Paradox to what happened in Ten Cloverfield Lane? Because if you remember, the guy who was down there with 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 um, Harry Stambler, whatever, mm-hmm. the guy to help them build a bunker, he said he saw a bright like flash that was so bright that it was like the heavens opened up. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened in Cloverfield exactly. Station. There was a big bright red flash. Um, it could be one of the. It could have been the first time or the second time they did it, and. I was like, oh, that's that's what he was probably talking about, because it, it bled into all the universes, and of course you had that you had that. Oops, I moved my mic. You had that exposition, where, where you know, with the guy uh, on the interview mm-hmm. saying, you know, no, this is bad. You know, it can it can, it can open up the d- demons and, and 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 whatever and beasts from the sea. I wish he didn't say beasts from the sea. He didn't go that far, but I get it. So, in as a forced origin story, sure. But it's kind of like how Prometheus was. Prometheus was supposed to be an origin story, uh, a prequel to Alien. It really wasn't. And you know what they did at the end? They shoehorned a little oh, xenomorph yeah. at the end. Yeah. Just say, yeah, oh, yeah, by yeah. the way, it really was a prequel. You see what I'm saying? For sure. That's what I kind of believe it was. That they, they did it as an afterthought because they wanted it to connect. When in reality, the movie, I think, was stood alone by itself. Um, what do you think about about the connections? Um, the connections were really. Uh, some of them felt like they were forced. Some of them didn't feel felt very natural. The ones that felt forced was the one with the, uh, the city where the guys walking into the rubbles. I think all. And he sees the shadow okay. of, the, of the monster in the background. Can we talk about that? The, the the side plot with the husband and I guess finding a random girl and the hospital. I agree. That's the one thing with the critics. I agree that that was. Boring. It was. It, it was it like, was, oh my god, was, get out of the way. It was boring. I want to go back and, to spaceship. And you can tell that that had nothing to do with the movie because a, he's always on his phone. He's always on his phone in, in almost every one of the scenes, and he's obviously in a, in a studio, in a stage somewhere. They probably just they brought him back for some reshoots because it doesn't make it doesn't look like it belonged in the movie at all. The movie. Um, that, I don't know that, what that, that whole scene with him. They, I don't know. They could have done. I wanted more space scenes. Oh yeah, I did too. I think that they should have fleshed. They could have used that, that side plot with him. All they need to do is is have him see the monster, get into a bunker. We don't see him again. Maybe at the end he calls. Oh, we got a hold of them. I don't, what, what do you think the little girl was about? I have no idea. What was that about? I, have no, I didn't pay attention much to the plot. I just wanted to go back to, to space. No, I know, but, but, but no, like, I didn't that, pay that, that didn't pay off at all. During that time, I was playing my Switch, so I kind of oh. like switched it off. <laughs> oh, I'm like, okay, it. spaceship time. No, I really did. Oh, the whole scene was boring. It, oh, have you heard from my wife? Oh, shoot, sorry, we, we, we are looking for them. We're currently looking for them. It, it looked like they disappeared. But please look for her. Hang up. Back to space. Oh, have you looked for my wife yet? I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I, just, I don't know. Yeah, it was a little. It was I, mm, ah, but it was still a good movie. I like the yeah, movie. Yeah, I so did too. I recommend it, guys. Check it out. If you watched Cloverfield, the Cloverfield Paradox, and you disagree or you agree, shoot us an email. Yes, I'm gonna keep 
sing this at Geek Bros. That's G E E K B R zero S at yahoo.com. Tell us what you thought of the movie, and um, we will read your response next week because right. we are all about audience participation. Yes, we are. You know how? What else we're into? What are we into? EA losing their license to Star Wars. Potentially, this is a rumor coming I from. I hope it's true. Comic book news. Comicbook.com. Comicbook.com. I hope EA loses their Star Wars license. That's that. Hey, no, we, we are not an opinion podcast. I don't care. Yes, we are. I'm because sorry. I hate EA. Because it's in your wallet. It's in the game. It's in your wallet. We it's in the, it's in the clouds. I think. Vi- I think. Uh, Dark it's in Flex, the loot box. I think Dark Flex is an EA fan. He I haven't played it. Star Wars Battlefront in forever. I know. Like it just, I played it, it fizzled out. He was, wait, was, he was waiting for uh, the third season to come out so you can play. There's a third season coming yeah, out. I think there's, there's three seasons. Yay! Out. So this article says things have been being quite so easily with Electronic Arts since it acquired the exclusive Star Wars game license from folks at Disney. Rumors reportedly talking with Activision and Ubisoft about Star Wars projects. Sure, the original Battlefront went very well when it when it came back for sales. But a sequel, which released last November, was met with a great deal of controversy over its loot box system. In fact, it going to go to the point Disney reportedly stepped into force the company to cancel its microtransactions right before the game's launch. Um, I don't know if you mentioned in the last podcast, or I think I don't know if I did or you did not, um, that game sales came back really bad, that they're reactivating the microtransactions for the game. Yes. Yes, I did hear that, um, and that's only what to recoup some loss. Exactly. Um, I get what we're saying here, but you are you really going to tell me that Disney did not know they were going to do microtransactions beforehand? Come on now, somebody ran this through to Disney and Disney. Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. And then when it say crap, oh oh oh, our, oh, our oh, license, oh, oh, our, oh, our name, you know, let's get it together. I mean, yes, it might have been uh, EA's. Uh, there's idea. been a lot. There's little about. There's been a lot of petitions out there. I'm, you know, I'm not much of a petitions and canceling things, but. Um, Except EA. for net neutrality petition. Exactly, that. but EA, you dropped the ball with Star Wars uh, Battlefront Two. I think you could have done better. The game has been sitting on my digital library without being touched since Such I finished chance. the game. I agree. I agree. Same thing. I have not played the game. Um, I was very disappointed but in the campaign. I enjoyed Battlefront One a lot. I didn't play much of Battlefront One. I enjoyed it because a I ne- lot. I never really enjoyed even without a story mode. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that game a lot. See, I don't like playing online because I get nerfed. What is it called? Nerfed. Nerfed. I get nerfed like no- like nothing. You just, you just get killed. I just want to play. I just want to play either with. A newbie. I want to play with either somebody next next to me or just play by myself. Play against the computers. So if you were so, to pick a studio for Ubisoft, Activision, THQ, any studio to pick up the Star Wars projects, what studio would you give? Either to? bring back Lucas Arts. Bring it back, and let you do it in house through Disney Interactive. But do you think that the Disney can has the has the? I don't know. They have the money, but you think they will be able to willing to bring up Lucas Arts again? Yeah, they should have. They should have even. They should have never dismantled it. Let Lucas Arts and then let Lucas Arts pair with some companies. So Lucas Arts has has the creative control, but then it's developed through other companies. Why not? Why do we dismantle Lucas Arts to begin with? Okay. I, I some of the some of the best Star Wars games came from Lucas. Exactly, Art. like Bring, Jedi Academy. Oh my God! Like Rogue Squadron. Jedi Academy. Rogue Squadron. Jedi Academy. Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. <laughs> <laughs> Great games, but I'm saying uh, um and or and Rogue Leader, but I'm saying fine if you don't want Lucas. What was the name of the shooting games uh, for Nintendo sixty four? Which one? The for the oh Shadows of the Empire was good. Yes. Shadows of the Empire was really good. The one where you had to fly the all the ships, Rendar. all the those ships, and you had to kill them. It was a Nintendo sixty four game. You mean Rogue Squadron? Yeah, yeah, that Rogue Squadron. I love that game. The game was ama- amazing. Well, okay, fine, Disney. You don't want Lucas Arts to develop their own games? Then use Lucas Arts as quality control. Oh yeah. Why not? And then move on. But uh, am I upset that that EA is losing it? Uh, nope, not really. Am I happy they're losing it? No, not really. Because EA. Yeah. Did the bare minimum because they know that the fanboys were going to get the game. They just weren't. They just were shocked by by the backlash. They put it all on the campaign and think that the campaign was going to pull it through, even with the microtransactions, without realizing that a the campaign was too short, b the campaign was lousy, and c the loot boxes, the microtransactions was a lot harder to swallow than they thought. I would love to see the game with Ubisoft, 
license just to imagine an Assassin's Creed tile game like imagine can you imagine a Star Wars game like the Assassin's Creed gameplay you go you climbing ships and going in the forest and then slapping down people well, wasn't that Star Wars the Force Unleashed and and that was beautiful exactly I love the Force Unleashed it was great so um, we'll see what happens with EA. Um, we'll continue monitoring the story as it happens. I don't know when we'll have an official answer. I think that right now Disney's on damage control. Between between the Last Jedi and and um, Battlefront Two, they're in they're in damage control right now. So yeah, they're they're probably gonna overreact. And yes, they are gonna gonna drop them. As we continue with damage control, do you know that the United States Senator has asked the department who. Man, I said overviews the ratings of video games to re-examine loot boxes. Really, really. Where this you get is this coming from? from Kotaku.com. <laughs> Yesterday, you knew I was ask you. Senator Maggie Hassan, a New Hampshire Democrat, sent an open letter to the Entertainment Software Rating Board, urging it to review the completeness of the board's rating process and policies as they relate to loot boxes, and to take into account the potential harm these type of Microsoft microtransactions may have on children. Now, is this just for, for console games, or are they talking about... Uh, loot boxes, I guess. No, right, but it's loot boxes. Loot boxes I guess, are for mobile gaming. I guess. For, you know, more. free to play, but 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 play to, but Let me pay finish. to win. Let me get the second, article, the second paragraph. Uh, excuse me. This comes I'm trying to have a four discussion months, here. as the SRB said, as first reported by Kotaku, that it does not consider loot boxes to be a type of gambling Loot boxes, which allows you to spend either real or in-game currency in exchange for randomized rewards, were at the center of an internet firestorm last year, thanks to their controversial implementation in games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Middle Earth Shadow of War. Since then, pundits and now even politicians have spoken out about the ethical questions surrounding them. I have no problem with loot boxes. The problem that I have with loot boxes is if they are being used to remove some of the enjoyment in games when I play a game hence be World of Warcraft I want to take my time to grow my character level it up you know be one with the character if I want to pay to be one with the character to be one with the character okay and right, why right, am I going to spend why am I going to spend that type of money some, on an incomplete game. Some people don't want. Some people don't want to be one with their character. So they give us two games: either a game that is a hundred dollars or a game that is sixty dollars, and that's it. Keep it short. Why continue going? Now, that's with real money. Now, loot boxes with in-game currency. I'm all about that because you gotta farm for that coin. You gotta get for that coin, and then hey, you know what? Let's spend some coin on some random stuff. Maybe yeah, I can then, get but, but more power. But then they let you exchange real currency for for coin then. And then you'll still you're still getting a loot box kind of thing. So it's, it, they're adding an extra step. So you can't pay, pay no, for no, loot boxes. That's only for mobile devices, though. Right, but if that's what's going to come. That's what's going to come. Freaking Vanay. What? Vanay's a great example. I don't know who Vanay is. She freaking loves loot boxes. She's playing this game called Choices. I don't know who who Vanay is. Vanessa. Van oh, Vanessa! How cool! I hate you. <laughs> she's gonna slap you. She can slap me. So she loves loot boxes. Because she's gambling, she's addicted. She's addicted to. And that's and choices. now that goes right back to what they say. They're not concerned about the gameplay or the fun factor. This is what they're talking about is the potential for it to be gambling, you know, and, and how it affects little kids. Because team right now, it's true. It can be very addicting. Just five more dollars. Just five more dollars. Just five more dollars. You know. <laughs> you know that's what, what she says all the time when she wants to look. See <laughs> exactly. So could you imagine a little kid that gets you know it's all shiny and lovely? And I won't even lie to you guys. When I was when I would open the daily loot box from um from Star Wars and it spins around makes all that nice and do 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 wom, 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 wom. I, I did get a little excited. I did. It was kind of cool. Got a so, horny there. What? I'm you, got a, you got a little horny there. Oh, I, I, this is a family podcast, won't you? Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Loot boxes, guys. Um, I'm down for them, I guess. No, I don't care. It's not, just don't ruin the games like you did with Star Wars. The um, the game. It was very disappointing how it went. I think it could have gone better, but unfortunately, it didn't. I mean, I don't think it ruined the game. I just think the game was 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 uh was poor, and I I still believe that that the gaming community um uh ooh I'm sorry. He said, "Why don't you turn that off?" 
Juancho is, is he's <laughs> Juancho has his phone. You see this when I use my phone, it's off to the side. Juancho puts his up right in front, and I'm looking at it, and I'm watching him look at something. It was some kind of nitrous drink there, and I was I, it caught my attention. It's the fruity drinks. Shoot. But anyway, no, I don't think that the loot boxes um, mess the gameplay for me. I, I mean, I I didn't care. I was never gonna buy any loot boxes anyway. I was just gonna play the game. I just was. I, I bought, it, I, bought it. It for, I bought it for the story. Um, and the story was lame, and I just think that I, I get where you guys are coming from, but EA really put their money on uh, the campaign. And what's the difference between this one and FIFA's game, um, their card game? They have like a this collectible card game in FIFA where they collect the players, and then they use these ships or these players to create big teams, and the team that's supposed to be mind blowing. So, EA, you guys get it together. Loot boxes, get it together. You know who else needs to get, get it together by? Who else? The players on the base of Dragon Ball Z Fighter because the player base has been down 80% in the PC world. This tr article is coming from GameRant.com. Well, you've really diversified our our, um, our articles. Wow. Why? Why? Because usually it's only Yahoo and Polygon. Now you do you Kotaku and Game Rant and, 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 and ComicBooks.com. Like, and I'm just saying is that uh, you, you've really, you've really, you've, you've really expanded our horizon. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not Yahoo. I just want, ha! Huh? I just wanted to, to, to <laughs> I just wanted to let the viewers know that you're getting from different locations. Despite now. having received a plethora of positive a reviews, plethora, a plethora of positive reviews at launch and setting a new franchise record, it looks like Dragon Ball Z Fighters fans. On PC are letting the title sit on the shelf and collect dust just a little over two weeks after its release. Although the title quickly became the most played fighting game in Steam history with more than 44,000 active players at launch, the player base for the PC version has plummeted, dropping 80%. I can't see anybody wanting to play that game on a PC um, because it, it screams console game. I didn't even know they would put this on a PC. Whatever the case may be in regard to Dragon Ball Z Fighter players base decline on PC even though the title managed a wallop to wallop Tekken 7's previous concurrence players record on Steam by a huge margin. Tekken <coughs> excuse me set the bar at eighty at eighteen point seven thousand players at launch, followed by Dragon Ball Z Fighters forty four point three thousand record. You okay? Want to eat some water? I'm just very shocked at how 80% of the players dropped this game. At least only 20%. Have you played this game? Yes, I did. Really? I enjoyed it a lot on the Xbox like, One. Like, do you do you own it? No. Okay. I got to play it. But All right, because we need to we need to do a review of it, but I haven't bought it either. It's it's, it's, it's interesting if you like those side scroller 2D games. Um, not much more of a fighting game. I've never been much of a fighter type of game oh. player. But I did enjoy it. Finish him. But... Um, nah, not much, much. But care, care for it. I watch a lot of people play on Twitch. You and your Twitch. I love Twitch. I know you love Twitch. That's why I watch games that I want to play to see if I'm going to buy them. And then <laughs> I buy them and I'm like, that. Why don't you just use Gamefly? So that's for yourself. Gamefly? Is Gamefly still alive? Oh, I don't even know. Shoot. So, guys, just remember something. Dragon Ball Z, it's real. In your heart. Dragon Ball Z, it's in the game. So, <laughs> you know what else is in the game? Disney. Disney's in the game? This is in the game, and that's what's going to cause them to fall. Okay, I'm this listening. This article's coming from Top Polygon, which titles, Disney's greatest strength is about to become its greatest weakness. Why is Captain Plasma St there? Star Wars fatigue. I said that on purpose. Plasma Star on purpose. Wars fatigue is here. I don't see it. I, I don't sense it, but I see it. There's a difference between seeing it and believing and it. Believing it. Or sensing it. When I, you start I, milking I just, the cow, uh -huh. so much milk is going to come out of that cow. When you no longer have milk, you have clutter of cheese. Right, but that's 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 not necessarily saying that you're milking it over milking it. What you're saying is that what you're getting now is is, the clutter is, is of cheese. it's turning, and that's and I agree is that it's not Star Wars fatigue. It's just that you're not pumping out quality stuff. You're it's, you need it's to the, guys. Disney, the milk is expiring. Yeah, the, the Disney needs to get new cows. They need to take them to Japan to get some massages. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah some, 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 some utter butter. Exactly. That works great for chopped nipples. Exactly. That's what Luke used on his little green thing yet on I2. <laughs> We're still waiting for my pictures, guys, by the way. Yes, yes, we will talk about that. Um, but that uh, our, our February uh, contest. So, <laughs> I hate you guys so much for that. <laughs> but let's see. Now, Disney... 
with Han Solo knowing that it's gonna flop in May because they know it. They they're assuming yes. You could tell that they're not they're not proud of it because of what they did, how they dropped the trailer. But here's late. the thing. I don't know if you listen to Full of Fits, uh, podcast. I do not. They made a good point that said during the time that they were filming for Han Solo, they were also marketing for the Last Jedi. So wouldn't you like? How would you be able to market two movies at the same time, Last Jedi and Han Solo? Um, no, they what? No, they were filming it while they were marketing. That I mean, while you're filming, you're not gonna market. Um, Han Solo while you're filming while you're while exactly you're, is that why we got a trailer so late nope that's not what happened between Rogue One and um and, and, and The Force Awakens oh that's very true Force Awakens came out when I was over and done with Rogue One we got a, we got a, a teaser we got another trailer we got what three we got like six trailers actually from yeah we actually did we had like six yeah, of them before I we think, got there I think Disney is this, it's like one of those like oh crap man this is our ugly baby I remember their third trailer when they, when they showed that it was going to be some space battles and I said that's it that's what I'm talking about. Well, I don't think that fatigue is here yet. I think it's I, not I fatigue. Stop, I, I don't, it's not fatigue. It's, not fatigue. it's just that they're not milking the correct cows. So. Right. They're, 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 the, the, the milk's gone bad. That's Hopefully, what it is. The next movie, which is supposed to be the episode nine, will pick up and then it's Obi Wan. And I, 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 I will tell you guys this now, officially on this podcast, this is what I told uh, Juancho on the clock um, that this is the third strike. For, for Disney and for Lucasfilm. If Han Solo doesn't wow me or I don't like it, I am not going to Star Wars Celebration with, yeah. with, with the Geek Bros in 2019. They will go, they will film, they'll bring it back. But I can't go because I can't be excited because the last three movies, which is the last three years, sucked. sucked for me. And I feel nothing. You know, when I went to Star Wars Celebration, I felt good. I saw The Last Jedi. When I go to Star Wars Celebration in 2019 with these guys, I'm not going to be excited about whatever quick thing they're going to show us in, in California you know oh, so if it's in California we don't know yet oh we don't know what's going to be there no. oh we don't we don't know if it's going to be in the states at all yeah we don't know yet they don't even have they haven't announced anything yet exactly why do you think it's that because they know they're going to have a record low turnout for Star Celebration oh man that was such a mess if I was George Lucas I wouldn't show up to that hopefully this time around they can get fix, fixed with the signatures because that was I'm such a still, horrible line I'm still trying to figure out why Hayden Christensen was there if he didn't show up in, in Star Wars the, the, he was the Last Jedi cast. I th- huh? His lower back was so amazing. You didn't touch his lower I, back. I did. It was it was JJ. Me, 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 JJ it was Dark me, Flex. Me, me and Dark Flex were holding him like that in the picture. He's a cool guy. It reminds me of he's a very cool guy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm I'm. You heard it here first. Vibe will not be attending Star Wars Celebration in 2019 if Solo is bad. And so, hey, it is what it is. Maybe Rebels will bring back something for me. Hopefully. You know what else they're gonna bring back? Sony Pictures. Sony Pictures, you have disappointed me, my friend. What did they do to you? Sony Pictures didn't have the balls enough to say, you know what? We did what we did and deal with it. Where is this coming from? This article is coming from the Washington Post. The Washington Post? What? Legitimate? Yeah, well, they're all legitimate, bro. What the fudge. Well, no, Washington Post, come on. Nobody, <laughs> nobody goes to Katuaku for, for. All right, come on. <laughs> so, sensitivity strikes again. For these sensitive parents out oh there. Oh the my world. God! You're not this story. See, what you guys have to understand is that Juancho gives the gives the um he gives me the uh, script, and he's now insisted that I don't pre pre review these articles because he wants my my reaction. So I didn't know this is what this is going to be about. So so um, since you know about it, talk about it. Tell us. Okay, so basically there is a scene in uh, Sony Pictures Peter Rabbit where he attacks somebody with with a, who's allergic to was it blueberries? blueberries yes, blueberries and uh, attacks him with it as a way to escape and it's his allergy and that's what that's what takes him out and the parents are actually very upset about it because it, it makes light or teaches the wrong lesson about food allergies and how dangerous it could be and makes it funny and as a gag for kids to maybe do it to and, other, other and here, kids and here's the thing what's the difference between the Pixar movie is it animals or the ones with the with the rabbit Ooh, Zootopia Zootopia yeah. where they use blueberries to turn animals feral which they're technically allergic to it if that's going to turn them into that reaction what's the difference between that and that it's not just it's that sensitivity it's, people it's stop being that. so oversensitive it's not just that i'm Juancho. tired of it bro it's not just that it's going to creep into our entertainment and it's going to ruin the entertainment creep. for it's us it already has but it's not just that it's, if you're going to tell me that that in this movie because he's going to use an allergy against an enemy and and cause it then how is it any different than 
cartoon violence. Exactly. It's the exact same thing, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot sit here and say, oh, we're upset about that because he uses allergy against against somebody. No. Then how is it okay that you can sit there and take, take your kid to uh, an animated feature where the animated characters are beating each other over the head and or taking that your children to go see Deadpool. What's the difference between that and over sense, um, like little blueberries? Makes no sense. The well, problem is that we're getting too sensitive. My generation, I don't know what's happening to y'all, but you guys need to get it together. And I'm talking about those 88s, 89s, and whatever late, early 90s you guys out there. Stop complaining over everything, bros and girls uh, I agree. and everyone. I agree that, it's not that fun anymore. It's I, really not. It's not. I agree that at this point... Entertainment is suffering because so, everybody is is sensitive about something. So the next a, and it, the next thing goes viral. Everybody loves here's it. Here's the thing: Rockstar, a video game industry, who have been known for the violence, video games. Yes, they were been blamed for many years for the violence. Oh, you guys are causing violence. You got no, 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 no. Video games, movies, things. They're, yes, they have a link to it, but they don't cause the violence if you teach right. You teach a child not to play with blackberries if they're allergic. Don't use them against them. Oh, you teach them. It's not you, that. It's you, simply as, as if you're watching it and you're engaging with your child. Okay, speaking as a father now, if you engage with your child and saying, listen, that's funny, but we don't do that in real life. This is just a movie. This is just a cartoon. Exactly. That's all you have to do. If you separate the entertainment from real life, then you won't be concerned. But if you're concerned about the impact that a movie has on your child, then guess what? You're a bad parent. For taking them to that movie, then and furthermore, you then you, you're you're devaluing your own your own values. You're devaluing your own sense of being able to police your child. Well, you're telling you're trying to say that movies and and TV and video games have have more of a message than, than you. You're you're literally displacing your own parenting to entertainment. Let's let's read a little bit of the tweeters from at Orange Alley. At Sony's, what a disgrace. Teaching children it's okay to bully and harass others with food allergies. You obviously have not staffed with children who could die from food allergies. Hey, Allison Wells, how about you watch Utopia? Hydrogen Girl 71. As a mother of a toddler allergic to several foods, I am disgusted that Sony will make a joke of flicking an allergic and a food allergic individual. Doing so is fatally aggravated assault. What kind of message does that send your kids? What about the Looney Tunes, Hydro Girl 71? Agreed. That's that, I mean, that's actual cartoon on cartoon assault. What are you guys talking about? And at Mouse, Brian Peterson. I'm not the only one who thinks this Peter Rabbit boy cut is a bit silly. I have multiple food allergies. Fruit, nuts, vegetable, eggs, wheat, dairy, and soy. Oh, Bro, poor what do you guy. Eat, oh, my man? God. Poor guy. You're looking at life. <laughs> He, sound, he actually sounds like Theostar. Theostar has multiple <laughs> allergies like this, too. I'm not offended or enraged, and, and I'm planning to watch it. I have a lot of friends on Facebook that who posted a, an article that and I said I'm going to still watch it I'm still going to watch it so you're causing a an industry to apologize to a silly scene what about Warner Brothers with the uh, Looney Tunes the Looney um, the the Maniacs with the Animaniacs movie? Animaniacs or Rugrats any of those Everything. cartoon shows uh, uh, Angry Birds you know exactly Angry Birds was was, was, was you know uh, uh, bird on bird, bird on pig violence. Exactly. How is that any different? And then you've got you got Spy Kids. You've got you've got um uh, uh how many different sh live action things? You have Home Alone. You've got these are all things that are violent, and these are our kids perpetrating it on adults. But nobody ever said, "Oh my God, you're making kids sadistic and violence." You should teach kids to call the police. Don't take matters into your own hands and attack criminals. Nobody said that back in the no day. No one. Why is that was funny now? because it was a movie. Now out of nowhere, movie's real. So Peter Rabbit's gonna come at me and throw me some blueberries. Oh, let's make this real, guys. It's not. And you know how we're gonna continue this conversation into the next topic, which is going to move us over into, um, here in South Florida, and a, a tragedy happened over the other week where a school got shut off. Prayers to all the families out there who lost their children. We were, we wouldn't want to see any of our children go through that. Um, a Kentucky governor. Where are you getting this from? Uh, Arstechnica.com. That's A-R-S-T-E-C-H-N-I-C-K.com. Um, video games, not guns, to blame for school shootings, says Kentucky governor. What? Well, here's the thing. It's the same as pornography. We're re prepping uh, what we saw here. Okay. This, art, this, this, this debate has been going on since I started playing video games. And the first violent video game my parents bought me I was in Mortal Kombat. Not even Mortal Kombat. Not Mortal Kombat. I was in I think 
No fifth, finish him? Fifth or fourth grade, Perfect Dark. What's that? You never played Perfect Dark? I didn't have a childhood, okay? With we talked about Golden this. Eye? Golden Eye! Well, that was just, that, the next one over was Perfect Dark. No, Golden Eye. Golden Eye was ish. The Golden Gun? Shooting the people head? and everything? Mm hmm. That was what I was growing up. But do you see me now? Did you just say you were growing up shooting people? And playing in video games and stuff like that. But do you see me now as a serial killer? No, no, I'm a good law abiding citizen of this world. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so much. I'm actually a good, loyal citizen of this world. Vibe just wants to be vibe. He's okay. Um, He's alright. So, they always blame video games. Grand Theft Auto. Oh, Grand Theft Auto. That's the name one. They go, oh, Grand Theft Auto. Saints Row. Any games that includes... Yeah, Grand Theft Auto was savage, though. <laughs> it was. The whole game was savage. Okay. Um, they blame video games. They blame movies. They blame this. Blame that. No, it's not that. Entertainment's out there to entertain us. This is, what's going, this is what's stopping us right now, and I want to make a good point here. This is what's stopping us from having us to involve from games like this to actual virtual reality. That little gap is stopping us, our creativity, from moving forward. If we keep damming down on the entertainment industry and not letting it be itself, you're going to dumb it down and you're going to hurt it. I don't and it's going that. to hurt us. I think that the parents and the policymakers need to look at themselves and say that, that and realize that, look, these things are being created and they're a form of entertainment. But whether or not they are, they are, they're influencing the children or, the, or individuals like that, Really, it depends upon the environment. What environment do they have that in, in which they they cannot understand that that to separate the, the line between reality and entertainment? I'm being dead serious. You, everybody's looking for a scapegoat. It's not my fault. It's the entertainment. It's not your fault. It's the entertainment. No, when the child does something wrong, the first question should be, what did the parent do, or what didn't they see, or what didn't they instill, or what values are missing in the household to allow that to happen? You know? Yes. Yes. There are some abnormalities out there, but at the same time, I don't believe that any random shooting or any random behavior crops out of nowhere. There are signs that can be seen. All you have to do is take a moment. Take an extra moment. Evaluate your child. Don't sit them in front of everything. Talk to them. Every, every now and then. No, just, just teach them, but just talk to them. And recognize some signs. You no, know, the you first know? thing when a parent's mommy that shooting game, they said, this is only for video games. You don't do this in real life. And never had to worry about it. Because why it's the upbringing in a household. Exactly. Your kids play uh, Battlefront and... They do. And, 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 and all that stuff. Yes, yes. And Joy, Fire, Joy Fire does play those um, intense games and... But you, you explain to them, you know, you do this in the video games. You don't do this in the our world. Simple as that. It's and, and it's not just that, though. that I don't necessarily let them play or watch certain things... Without without me being in the room, because so you can explain to exactly. Them. So I just explain like like. Don't get me wrong. Now I um I introduced my, my kids at a young age to Family Guy. And family, <laughs> like, I did I did because it was something funny and I, but I but I sat there and I I told them we can watch this together, but don't let me ever see you watching this by yourself. This is back when they were like six or seven or or, 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 or you know <laughs> or, or five or six. No, get me wrong. No, I, I was it a, was it a, was, it a, was it a show for kids that young? No, but I said you know what they're gonna stumble upon it. They see me watching it. They're curious. So guess what? If it becomes a secret, they will look at it on their own. So I said mm -hmm. come inside, watch, enjoy it. Don't do this. Don't say that. But whatever. And guess what? My kids call me now and say, can we have a piece of, can we have a Pop-Tart before they have one? They're 13 and 12 now, and they will call me at work if they're at home and say, Dad, can we have a Pop-Tart? Why? Because I've instilled to them that, that they shouldn't do certain things. If, if, they do, if they feel like they shouldn't be doing it without my permission, they need to ask. And they do. Mm -hmm. They do. And I'll sit out here, and anybody that knows, that knows me, you know, knows the studio. The studio's in-house, in my home, and it takes up my entire dining area right next to my kitchen. So I'm out here editing while my kids are, are playing their video games or while they're watching their shows. And I'm paying attention. They think I'm not paying attention, but I am. And I'll catch them and say, what are you watching? I don't, I don't like that. Or that better not be bad. And I, you know, I, was, I come by, I walk into their room, when it's, when it's too quiet, hey, what are you doing? All right, cool. Not to be in their face, but just, just curious. I don't sit in my room or sit editing without engaging with my children. And guess what? My children are well-developed children, and I will never have a problem with them on that level because I am an active parent. And there is the thing. We need to look at ourselves, parents out there who are parents. Look at yourself Make first. Make the time. I know we're all busy. Make the time. And you'll see that it's not the entertainment industry or video game industry that is causing these sometimes it's us as parents I'm not a parent 
it's us that we don't really pay much attention to our children which lets us let them go into the wrong path we have allowed devices and entertainment to be our babysitters even when we don't need babysitters very true and it, and it, is, it is taking away the dinner table and it's making, making them sit there and, and do it I get it this is the world we live in but come on now Take some time to talk to your child. Take some time to, and instill the values that you want to see. This is so. What if something happens? You're not sitting there saying, "What I, it, uh, this is school. The school should have, or the or the, the entertainment." And I'm the no. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Entertainment is entertaining. Simple as that. There, there's there's there. It's no more or no less um, impactful than your own words. And if there's any moment where you believe that the entertainment that your child or your or, or whomever. Is, is subjected to is more powerful than your own words cut it off there we go. or raise your voice that's why that's mm -hmm. how I feel there we go good saying and that's gonna lead us to I don't can I hear that oh step in the spotlight spotlight oh yeah so that's, guys yeah. guess what it's time for a good note Let's talk about Black Panther. Uh. Let's talk about Black Panther. Talk about sex, baby. Oops. <laughs> and let's talk about Black Panther. Black Panther. Mind blow. Like, oh my god. What a movie. Be before we get into this? No, before I want to get into this, I want to say something. Vibe. If you ever compare this movie to Luke Cage or any what can I say Afro Af Afro related movie sure why not Afro related movie don't this Black Panther stands on its own pedestal they pushed not they pushed an agenda but they mentioned certain hot topics out there and they weren't all up in your face about it it was amazing to see such messages being pushed through that screen and didn't feel forced like it was in Luke Cage, like in the other Afro movies that I've seen. Well, because because in the, for this movie, the 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 plight of the African American um, people of the world was actually part of the plot. It wasn't just social commentary. It was actually was part of the plot, and it made sense. And it was such a good good movie. The research that they did, the African culture, you actually felt like that was a real. It, it was a, when it comes to Marvel movies. Black Panther is a very different beast, very different beast. As in the look, the sound, the cast, the even the skin color. Okay, it was a very different beast, and it was it was it was amazing. By the way, before we get really into this, this is a spoiler review. If you don't want to listen to this, now would be the time to to cut us off. Don't forget that you know check us out on social media. We also have our our review coming up after this. It'll be posted this weekend. Also, half non spoiler, half spoiler, and of course our Stardust immediate review on Stardust, the Stardust app. Check us out. It's at Vibrev Studios, V I B E R E V S T O D I O S. That is on the Stardust app to see our initial reaction as we're walking out of the theater. So. Wancho, did you like this movie? I loved this movie. I loved the movie. The movie was amazing. The acting, the the voice, the language, the whole cinematography of the movie. Just everything, the location. The only thing I didn't like was stupid words, but that's beside the point. The movie was so amazing. I liked it. The character who played the child's cousin, I forgot his name already. Uh, oh, um, oh man. Yes. I know you talk about He him. made up his character by, uh, he made up for, um, for, for, for um, Fantastic Four? Fantastic Four. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, I absolutely love the movie. The, I, I had a smile from ear to ear the, en the entire movie. No, I didn't cry. Well, cried well, at the end. The only time I wasn't smiling was when I was, was when I felt actual emotion. You felt emotion. Okay. The first time I felt emotion, the first time I got teary eyed was when, um, T'Challa went into um, the spirit world, and his father popped up. It was a pa it, 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 the scene. It was like a shot scene out of Lion King. Okay, you had Black Panthers on a tree, and one came down and morphed into his father. And and when he saw his father, and he fell to his knees, I couldn't help it. Tears formed my eyes because he was in such he was in such he, he was in pain from his memories of what happened in Civil War. 
Um, which I thought the flashbacks were very tasteful, by the way. Very tasteful flashbacks. And the flashbacks were really good. They were. And so when he when he saw his father and I just thought, wow. And that was powerful. It really it, it I don't know why, but no, I know why. Oh, um it, it touched side, me. On a side note, yep. um lies. Deceptions you made up for it. Oh, you mean okay? For we'll, we'll get there. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was my favorite scene. What was your favorite scene in in this movie? My favorite scene of this movie was where she, uh, his sister, gets into the sand car, where the sand transforms into the car. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The memory. I sand. was I was not expecting that at all. That completely blew my mind. That oh man, it was. So well, let's use that. Let's talk about Wakanda's technology. Now we've seen we've seen magic. We've seen science. We've seen Stark stuff. We've seen um, uh, out, out, out of this is, world. Stark, are you ready to lose your business to Wakanda? Cause God, man, their technology at the I mean, it was when I saw it was a perfect model of of an, of Afro future civilization. Exactly. I was like, wow. Like the trailers, the trailers don't don't the trailers don't do it justice. They don't. If you saw the scope of Wakanda and how it was designed, okay, holy crap. That's all I can say. Um, what was your uh, favorite character? My favorite character is not actually T'Challa. It was actually his sister. Oh my god! I, yes, his sister. His sister. I thought was his sister was hilarious. I, I loved her. Like, like I agree. Like she's in the, when they're in the. Um, after that, can we hurry up? I, I, I this corset is itching me, and I want to go home. You know, so, and, and, you <laughs> know what and it was. It's funny because it's, it's the same standard Marvel humor, but with an African accent, and yet it felt so fresh. Okay, it felt so fresh. <laughs> you know, I liked it. It was amazing. Okay. Now, if we, if we can do a character expose, I have to say one thing. I didn't like T'Challa's character as much as I did in, in Civil War. Here's, here, here homie, hold it up. You've, you've ever seen Rurini Kenshin? No. You know, okay, well, Rurini Kenshin, it's kind of similar. Rurini Kenshin, before Rurini Kenshin's anime series, there was a series called Samurai X, where he was the, the Batosai, something like that, and he was ruthless, dark, evil, killing people completely. But it ended, and then Rooney Kenshin. That was the same character, way different character. Lighthearted, didn't kill, used the blunt side of his of his of his sword, and he only he, he got super crazy sometimes. But he didn't really kill anybody. Those two characters, same character, Samurai X and Rooney Kenshin, same character, Kenshi, but two different portrayals. And Rooney Kenshin, when I watched, it, I was like, this is not the same thing. Oh, it grew on me though. But he, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. So. He was dark and brooding in Captain America Civil War, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought he was going to be. He was so much more lighthearted in this, in this movie. So it, it, it took me off guard, especially his first interaction with um, with his sister and the girl. The, the, what's his her name? Love interest. His love interest. I said... Which is weird, because Storm is actually his lo love interest in the comic books. How's that weird? I mean... I mean Storm is actually... There is no Storm in the MCU yet. But So that's Thank what you. I found completely weird for at first, but... It grew on me, True. and I actually liked it. So, if you guys are looking for T'Challa, mm. similar to the brooding, really darkness that he was in, in Civil War, it's gonna be a rude awakening because he's absolutely the exact opposite. He's joking, he's smiling, he's you know whatever darkness when when he gave back Zemo, it like cl cleared up immediately. So, that's that's what we're gonna say about that. Let's talk about briefly because we're not gonna. If you really want the full one, the good, the bad, the ugly characters and plot. You have to watch our review on the YouTube channel, uh -huh. okay? So we're just giving you a, 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 just like just a snapshot. What did you think about the Killmonger, the the enemy? The Killmonger enemy was his cousin, right? Yeah, it was interesting. I like enjoyed his character. His character they they, well. they did. It, it wasn't first. They tried to humanize his character. They tried to. Um, Yes, they did. Yes, they did try to humanize his character, but it, didn't but, work. But, it's, but it didn't. It didn't work for me. It's very true. Though I there was, but but. But and spoiler, but did you realize the scene where he went where, where he was a little kid in his flashback? Yeah. And he and he and he the way he held his father. Yeah. The exact same way T'Challa held T'Chaka yes. in Civil War. Exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. They mirrored it. So basically, what I like what they were trying to do is saying is that had had T'Challa not um, been involved in Civil War and just 
was consumed by by darkness he would have become Killmonger. Correct. That's what they're trying to say. Mm-hmm. So in that retrospect, I liked it. But at the same time, Killmonger is just, I want to rule the world. I want to break it all down. I'm angry. Um, and I don't know how the heck he beat T'Challa. That, dude, that drove well, me nuts. Well, here's the thing. T'Challa, it, it was a warrior, but you're now messing with a trained military CIA. Uh, did you see what he did to the, winter, to the Winter Soldier? But, did that's, you? but here's the thing. He uh-huh. had powers. Who? Black Panther, because he had the suit on. So the suit. Inf- he beat the crap out of the Winter Soldier inside but, a shield, the, but, to but, the headquarters. Yeah, but, CIA. But he had the Black Panther outfit on. He wasn't. He's, he wasn't. He, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't by himself. He had the. About? He had the suit on. Not. Not in CIA. But most likely, well, here's the thing: Did the Black Panther have? Oh no, hold on. Here's the thing: He had had the Black Panther drink before it because. You cannot fight that well without that drink. You saw what happened. They took his powers away. That's how he lost. No, he didn't. They gave him the powers. They gave. They gave him the powers. That he, when he drank it, they said, "Now you have the Black Panther powers." But immediately. when when you're fighting for the ritual and uh-huh. you're taking that drink, that's not taking it away. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Bro, when you watch it tomorrow or watch it again, I will hope you know what. When he drinks, when he drinks, well, before it, battle. Before battle, they they give him a drink and it says, "Now you have." No, the- you are removing it. That's why it's black. When you get it back, it turns purple because now you're getting back the essence of the Black Panther. Okay, I gotta read. Maybe, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Maybe no, no, it did. Say, he said it. The, the guy says, "Drink this because now we're going to remove your essence of the Black." But that's how he lost oh. because he doesn't have that power anymore. So okay. he has to fight to earn it. Okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. But Shoot. um, but yeah, when it comes to to, to uh, enemies or villains, you know, he was okay. Yeah, he was no Loki. He was no. I like Zemo. I don't know why nobody likes Zemo. I, I he was no. So. I'm glad he was no. Died. He was no Zemo. He was no Red Skull either. I kind of like no. the Red Skull, but um, Killmonger was fine. The, the what he the twist with um, with with what's his name? With that one hand. The 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 white guy. Yeah. Zeno. No. A oh, white disorder. He cut his hand off. Who cut his hand off? Well, Ultron cut his hand off. What's his name? Oh, oh I forgot his name. The guy who sells the vibranium to him. Yes, yes. What is his name? name? Oh, yeah. The twist with him—they used him as just a plot device. Yes, yeah, it wasn't much fun. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I thought he was gonna be something more, you know. Yeah, but it wasn't. So, so I was quite, quite shocked about it. Now let's talk about the the weakest part of the movie, which I believe is Black Panther versus Black Panther. It was. You know what I'm talking about? Black Panther. Black, Black Panther when he, when he was facing Killmonger, which is just oh, basically Black Panther. Yeah. Jaguar? Jaguar? No. Well, yeah, the Jaguar yeah. outfit on. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, it was exactly the same outfit, you know? Yeah. That is the only weak spot. Why did it have to be that? It's like, why? Because it's against family, blood versus blood. That's what they were trying to I, go for. I guess, but like, we had that in two Iron Mans, where we, where we ended up fighting Iron Man. And we had that in in Doctor Strange, where you ended up fighting another sorcerer that had very similar powers. Like, can we can we can we do something different? Like that was that was the weakest part for me. Uh, the weakest part for me was the whole scene trying to get the king at the beginning with uh, the monkey people. What? The, um, what was the name of the people? The tribe that um, decided to. I don't know the the gorilla. Yeah, the gorilla, gorilla tribe. The gorilla tribe. The Harambe tribe for uh, for Dark Flex. Yes. The Harambe tribe. That was the weakest part for me. I, they could have done better with them. Now you mean when they went to go find T'Challa from no. there, or just uh, in general? At the, at the beginning, I loved them when they went to find. You mean T'Challa. when they when, you mean when they when they challenged him for the throne? Yeah. I like that. I didn't really like it much. I I, I, I don't know. I could. I was hoping it was the guy with the little freckles at the beginning. Oh, well. Okay, so to wrap this up, um, again, if you guys want to hear our full review... Oh, look, before this, just do the end credit scene before we go. Mm-hmm. Break down the credit scene. I put the, break down the end credit scene. Go for it. Um, super spoilers. Super spoiler. So you have... The first one is you see him talking to the um, United, United, um, United Nations. Nations. And then one of the friends... Which is funny because that scene that we're referring to was in the trailer. Yeah. We didn't even know that was that was going to be the end credit scene. And he says, "Oh, the French guy says, what do you, what does Uganda have to offer the world?'" No, and what what, like, what does a country that 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 are full of farmers have to offer the world? Exactly. And he just kind of grinned, and that's how it ended. And then, but wait till you see the kind of freaking crap that they have to offer. And then the last one. That's gonna be a game changer, everybody. By the way, because now Wakanda is opening up his their their country to to share resources. Oh, yeah. That's gonna change the world. And then you have now um, Bucky. 
with all that arm with only one arm and uh, T'Challa's sister showing him let me show you around they call him the white wolf right they call him the white the, the white wolf that's um, fun I'm so, excited to see him so back so what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is what does that mean what is that about because I thought they were freezing him until they can get the stuff out of his head are they saying that she that she got it out of his I head I think so he looked more peace a piece he we'll, did I mean, we he won't did say find out you. until May right when we finally see him in action with Captain and now Zulu Nation I want to see more of her, of the of the general fight against old uh, Thor, uh, Thanos. You know who I thought was beautiful, uh, Lupita Lupita Nyong'o, yeah. whatever yeah, her name is. Lupita. Yeah, she was, great. she was gorgeous. I mean, beautiful. Was, like I couldn't which, stop which, looking which at her. her again? Huh? The, which one? The the bald one? No, no, she was the uh, the love interest. Okay. Oh, the, I really much feeling like uh, she's beautiful. I thought yeah. she was beautiful. I couldn't but, stop looking at her. Let's talk about the. the uh, we'll talk about it in the video. Let's let's break. Let's wrap it up so we can continue this discussion in the video. Bye. Any last words? Um, watch the movie. It's probably the best thing I've seen in a long time. Um, <coughs> excuse me, best thing I've seen in a very long time. It is. Um, He's wearing his and, cheeky it is, outfit. I actually, yeah. If you guys are watching the recap, I'm actually wearing my uh, the shiki that I usually wear once a year. He feels African. So, um, please, guys, watch it. It's. It's a different beast, but it's just so unique. It's worthy of your time to watch. Exactly. Uh, Vibe, do you have anything for February contest to say? Okay, so just before before we wrap it up, um, the February contest, don't forget, it has been, uh, this is a product of Dark Flex. We are asking for any of our audience to please Photoshop Juancho's face onto the... the Blue cow. The, the, no, no, the, the, the creature, cows. the creature um, on Octu that, <laughs> that Luke was milking. Okay, if you're interested in, in doing this Photoshop and entering this contest, we need you to send us uh, an, an interest intent email to uh, Geek Bros. That's G E E K B R zero S at yahoo.com. Tell us you're interested in, in participating. We will send you several headshots, several of Juan Show to see you Photoshop. And um, the best one will be picked at the end of February, and you will, you will earn yourself two, maybe three prizes that we have. Um, and. Uh, It'll be fun. So please, by all means, join us. This is our February contest, and it is hilarious. Well, bye. Where can they find us again? You can find us first and always at WeBeGeeksPC.com, the original place to, to hear our streaming of our um, podcast. You definitely want to go there. Don't forget that our video recap goes up a couple of days later on our YouTube channel that you can get through through the, the, the production of Vibe Studios. V-I-B-E-S-T-U-D-I-O-S. -S. Wait, did I do that? Wrong. V I B E R E V S T U D I O S dot com, Vibrefstudios dot com. Then we've got our, our, our social media. At Geek Bros at G E K B R zero S. That's Geek Bros with a zero. That's the Twitter, the Facebook, and the Instagram. And the email. That's Geek Bros with a zero at yahoo dot com. And now officially, Vibe Studios has joined the Stardust app. Whenever, uh, it's not going to be necessarily just Geek Bros related, but anytime. Myself or any of the any of the members are going to be going to see a movie and want to do a reaction. So you can find us on, on Vibe Rev Studios, V I B E R E V S T O D I O S. Follow us there for all our immediate reactions. So if you want to see our, our first reactions, uh, we we set up we did two of them for um, what is it for Black Panther? Yep. Check it out there. You we're walking out of the theater as we're discussing it. Um, check it out. It's what 10, 15 minutes. Yep. Seconds. Seconds. It's yep. not that bad. So. I like to thank you guys for listening to Keep It Up the Geek Bros episode 29. Juancho. This is Juancho. This is Vibe. And remember, guys, I love you all. Thank you for tuning in to Keep It Up the Geek Bros video recap episode 29. Do you like this? If you like this, look, Stay tuned. comment below. If you, and you heard all that stuff now, anything that we discussed here, comment below. We'd love to read it on the air too. Yes, you know? yes. Um, if not, email us, geekbros, yahoo.com, with a zero. Thanks for tuning in. Juancho. This is Juancho. Peace. Keeping up with the Geek Bros.
We said no phones off and vibrate. It is on vibrate. That's what she said. In a world where geeking out never looked so good, two incredibly sexy men will rise sexy. for your auditory pleasure.